So I just want to remind you a little bit about the importance of participating in the class. So even though this is a video, still have your book handy and try to focus on that. Uh, use your notebook, use a pen and just focus on that. And that this is of course important for our classes too. So <clears throat> if you haven't done this already, please make sure you go into Google Classroom. Uh, you can search for that in any search engine. And make sure when you go to the Google Classroom website, you look for uh, how to sign up for a class. If you can look at this slide, you can see the class codes for all the relevant classes. So if you could sign up for that and um, before the next time we meet that would be very useful because you'll be getting lots of um, participation points if you complete those tasks in this website. So this particular slide is up for class 078. Please make sure you check the dates here. There's of course been a lot of changes due to the coronavirus but most of the dates will still be correct especially for midterms, finals and projects. If you have any other questions about the dates, please let me know. This slide is for classes o, class 035. Again, all the information here is about the midterms, the finals, the projects. Some of the dates are, weren't decided because of the problems with the virus, but if we, if you have any questions, please ask me on Kakao or in the classroom or through my email. These dates are for class 048. And if you could send me any requests for information if it's not very clear through this slide. And also, hopefully, the slide will be correct with regards to the dates for the finals projects, the midterms and things like that. This slide is about the information uh, with regards to midterms and finals. So uh, if we haven't done the midterms yet, please look at those uh, this slide and check out the pages of and the units that need to be covered. I've given for the midterms units one, two, three and four and in unit one you can see the vocabulary is on pages seven to nine and the grammar I think is on pages 19 and 20 and um, if we if, uh, for the other um, for the finals we are doing five units five six and seven and you can see all the pages are outlined there for the grammar and the vocabulary Don't forget to log on to the Google Classroom and onto Kakao Open Chat, which you should have by now. If not, please talk to another class member or myself. If any of you are interested in working in England, please message me and uh, I will let you know more about that. There are some schools in England where you can study IELTS and other courses and uh, this particular school is near my hometown so please go there if you want to study English I hope you remember to log on to IQ online all of that information is at the front of the book if you go to the front of your book you can see there are steps to sign on for that and I recommend you do that because some of the work that I'll ask you to do is online. Some of the listening activities are online so I hope that you can do that. And Here are the passwords for each class so if you look over them and then work, uh, log on to that website that's at the front page of the book. This particular slide is um, the link to the project work. I hope that you're coming along with that and make sure you have a team ready to uh, finish that project and all the information is on the table which you can get through the link that link is found on any of the slides that I've sent to you via Kakao Open Chat so you should be able to connect to that and 
um, start to work on that project. So this is the midterm test. It's for role plays, and if you've if we've already done the midterm, then don't worry about this. But if we if we've not if we've not done it yet, please work through that and make sure you have a team and make sure everybody participates in the role play. And um, we'll do that at the appointed time for the midterms. So today we're going to continue to talk about uh, advertising and this is from unit 4 so I want to focus on a movie first that is about advertising and this movie looks at the corruption in advertising the movie's name is thank you for not for thank you for smoking and in the movie uh, the main uh, director is a, a director called Jason Reitman and he's uh, he's chosen Aaron Urquhart as the main actor for the movie and really it's um, a movie it's a comedy about uh, tobacco companies and how they advertise smoking uh, the movie was brought out in 2005 um, it says actually that the audiences who watched this movie liked it. 87% of audiences liked this movie and the critics also, the movie critics liked the film, it got an 86% um, score on Rotten Tomatoes. On IMDB it got 7.6 out of 10 so it's quite highly rated and it's very popular I actually haven't seen the film yet but I've heard it's a black comedy and and it's based on a 1994 satirical novel written by a man called Christopher Buckley and I think it's worth mentioning that most tobacco companies in America in the past did not consider the health issues around the, the smoke around smoking tobacco they thought that it didn't really matter sometimes it was said that they uh, advertised it as healthy for people of course we now know that it isn't healthy and that it's really unhealthy and that it brings cancer and but uh, this is meant to be an expose on tobacco lobbying so in South Korea we know that most people a lot of men smoke and a lot of women too and uh, so I think the lobbying groups tend to uh, work in the government to try to force them to lower uh, the pr uh, to allow them to sell more tobacco tobacco by lowering prices and also to get rid of taxes and things like that and I think they also want people to um, <coughs> they want the companies to uh, take off the health warnings you know of the packets because no one wants to see those on the tobacco packets so there's a lot that they try to do some of it is dishonest and unethical but they are all only focused on making money so what I want to encourage you to do now is to go over to YouTube and watch a couple of uh, trailers or video clips from the movie um, and just sort of learn about what this movie is about if you can also perhaps you could look at some movie reviews on IMDB or Rotten Tomatoes or even look at the Wikipedia page about the movie and just read about that and what I really recommend is for you to watch the movie if you can and think about the movie and perhaps write a review or talk about that with some friends and record what your thoughts are about this movie and perhaps send that to me
So now I want us to uh, work perhaps with friends in a group by yourself or talk to a few of the team members in your team on Kakao Talk. I want you to do a kind of mind mapping activity and this mind map is obviously about advertising and marketing. What products are in advertising on the internet, TV, radio and billboards or in magazines and newspapers? Um, I want you to think about these ideas and just sort of write them down okay so I'm just right now looking at an advertisement on Yahoo and Yahoo if I just look at the f as soon as I've opened it the, f the main advertisement is an Air France advertisement encouraging Koreans to go to France and they've got three cities that they're advertising the first one is Nice, the second is Lyon and then Marseille and the price is a little bit cheap less than 700,000 won, it's very cheap uh, and then there's an Adobe uh, Creative Cloud advertisement and uh, that's obviously something to do with technology software certain software and then we've got Grammarly uh, Grammarly uh, is a software tool to help people with their grammar and spelling so that's an interesting advertisement on Yahoo and uh, yeah so that's that's one of the ways companies advertise that's through uh, you know Yahoo and I'm just going on to Naver now because I want to see what advertisements they have. They've got a World Vision advertisement, which is interesting. That's a charity that asks people to donate to poor people around the world. And so that's quite interesting how World Vision has that kind of money. And I guess they're trying to encourage people to give um, to, to charities... Um, for, and to help the poor and I'm not sure how much Koreans give to um, charity I don't know but Korea is now quite a wealthy country and I guess um, I, I guess charities see Koreans as potential donators to um, to uh, charities such as World Vision Another advertisement I can see is for it looks like Naver Pay, Naver Pay, a kind of payment method I think. I suppose it's something like Kakao Pay, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So that's another advertisement on Naver at the moment. So obviously advertisements are everywhere. They're all uh, everywhere. They're just on billboards, in magazines, in books and you know listening when we listen to the radio and there's always things being advertised um, I can't I'm in my office right now I was just hoping maybe I could see some advertisements somewhere nearby but there's nothing but you know there's so much advertising out there some people say that advertising is actually a waste of money some people say that maybe only 50% of advertising works. The rest is just a complete waste of money. What do you think about that? Anyway, so just talk about the adverts that you've seen recently around you, okay, in your mind map. So now I want us to go to the book. Um, so there's three things I want to focus on in this unit. Uh, the first one is vocabulary on page 88. Then it's grammar skills on page 90, which I believe will be in the test as well. And then there's pronunciation skills on page 91. So we're going to start from page 88 and go all the way through to page 93 and 94. To page 94 no, oh, to page 93. Okay, so let's start with the vocabulary skills. And if we do get time, we will look at pay, uh, speaking skills as well and note-taking skills. Okay, so first of all, 
Um, on page 88, vocabulary skills. Context clues to identify meaning. When you hear a word or phrase you don't know, it is sometimes possible to determine the meaning from the context. Context means what is surrounding the word or phrase. Try to identify the part of speech and think about the words that surround it. Use this information to help you figure out what the word means. So they given an example in this box. It says, this magazine has a circulation of 100,000 a month. So circulation, when I think of circulation, I think of circles, right? So that's weird. This magazine has a circle. Okay, so it doesn't mean a circle, right? It means something else, but how can we find out what it means? So it's about a magazine. There's a number, a number 100,000 and a term, a month. So circulation is a noun. You can tell it refers to the number of copies of the magazine sold per month. So in this case, it means a num uh, the number of copies of the magazine sold per month, okay? We advertise a lot in video games because teenagers are, are our main target. We advertise a lot in video games because teenagers are our main target. So target here, target is like for archery and uh, so target is a noun. You can tell it refers to the type of people that the ad is aimed at. So we can. it says here, the, we advertise video games and teenagers are our main target. Teenagers are the people we try to sell to. So that's another important point about vocabulary skills. So, and then there's one about infomercials. It's another difficult word. It's a combination of information and commercial. So what I want you to do is, in part A, read the sentences, underline the context clues that help you determine the meaning of each bold word, compare your ideas with a partner. So part one, the ad is so big and colorful, it's very eye-catching. So part two could be, the radio station plays the same, same ads all day. It's tedious to hear them over and over. Okay, same ads all day, over and over. Those two phrases, I think, make us think tedious is boring. It means it's boring. Number three, do number three about prime time. What does prime time mean? Number four about push. Number five is, is height. hype. Sorry. Number six is catchy. Then go to part B. Catchy. The slogan was so catchy. Okay, part B. Um, write each word from activity A next to the correct definition okay so you're taking those words from part A putting them there so for example eye-catching um, would probably be <coughs> excuse me number one to make something especially noticeable or attractive so people will buy it <coughs> and then if we go to page 90 there's grammar and the grammar is modals expressing attitude, okay? So modal verbs are auxiliary verbs. and But in some cases, we use them strongly to express an attitude. So the um, modals can be used to express prohibition, prohibition, like must not and can't, or strong obligation, have to and must or recommendation, should, shouldn't, ought to, or no obligation, don't have to. No, must not, must and must not are more common in writing than in conversation. So then this is a listening activity, so you will need to go onto IQ online again. Do part A and circle the modal verbs you hear. And you can have, you can see number one, is it don't have to or can't? Number two, is it must not or don't have to? Number three, is it don't have to or can't? Number four, should or have to? Number five, shouldn't or don't have to? So do the listening and then practice this dialogue with somebody over cacao talk. I think that would be helpful. And then discuss these questions with people over cacao. What do you think about ads that might make people angry? Are there any types of advertising that should not be allowed? Okay, 
and so that's talking about the ethics of advertising okay using modal verbs should not be allowed okay let's go to the pronunciation part one and then there's pronunciation part two the first is intonation in questions intonation is different for yes no questions than it is for wh questions okay the intonation rises at the end of yes no questions it falls at the end of wh questions here's an example okay is there an advertising standards code all right so that goes up and wh questions how do you find ads that break the rules what areas do you focus on in particular so that goes down okay and so listen to the questions do they rise or fall in part a on page 92 and then intonation in questions part two is statements as questions sometimes a statement is spoken with ris rising intonation to make it a question this often happens if the speaker is surprised by what he has just heard listen to these examples so this is a statement there are no federal regulations and there are no federal regulations that's the question form so you've changed the statement into a question again in part C there you need to listen to the questions you need to listen to those questions on IQ online find out whether they are questions or statements so do page 92 and 93 part C listen through IQ online and decide are they statements or questions and the next if you look at the question form they say there are no federal regulations it's a surprise oh really there are no federal regulations I'm surprised about that so do part C go to IQ online have a listen to questions 1 to 7 and choose whether there's a intonation rise at the end or not if there's an intonation rise then we can assume it's a question if there's no intonation rise then we can, see, can we can assume it's a statement so again IQ online page 92 to 93 exercise C about intonation in questions changing a statement to a question in spoken English So continuing about advertising, um, we see that everywhere. What I want us to do now is um, do a kind of quiz for other people in the class using some of the dialogues. Um, there are two dialogues in the chapter. The first dialogue I can see is on page number 94 and the second dialogue I can see is on page 90 so page 90 and 94 there are two dialogues one is between Yvonne and Maureen the other one is between Hugo and Peter you can also use the dialogues that I think you can find on IQ online from the listening activities what I want you to do is to make a kind of dialogue quiz and using either the dialogues from the book or the dialogues from IQ online I want you to jumble up the sentences and prepare the dialogues um, from those jumbled sentences and let another team uh, try to correct them and put them in the correct order so for example if we look at page 90 <coughs> you might want to remove the names from the dialogues so that it's just what they say and then put numbers number the sentences um, because there's one two three four five six seven the seven thing seven sort of turns uh, Yvonne um, says four and Maureen says three things um, and then just number them and then you can jumble them up easily and then people will need to guess which order they went in so for example the first one Yvonne says 
Oh, look at that ad. These poor animals. How can they show them suffering like that? I think it's terrible. Okay, so perhaps that could be put in a different position in the dialogue, like fifth or something, or third. And then perhaps the next one, Maureen, says, really, I think it's quite effective. They're trying to get your at your attention, you know. Maybe you could put that, like, at the end or right at the beginning. And then people need to sort of read each sentence and try to figure out which position they are in, in the dialogue. It then gets people looking at uh, the beginnings of the sentence and the questions and helps people to try to understand the context and how they can improve that uh, sentence so that it sounds correct, that it flows, there's a flow. And you could do the same with page 94's dialogue. For example, the first one says, Hugo says, hey, look at this ad, it's got six famous people in it. That could go somewhere else in the dialogue. And then a bit later at the end, Peter says, well, I guess it's eye-catching, but I'm not sure how effective it is. Maybe that could go in the middle somewhere at the beginning. And people need to figure out which position that goes in. So it seems like there is only six here instead of seven, but that's fine. It's not as many. But yeah, just use those to create a dialogue quiz, and then we'll use those dialogue quiz quizzes, those jumbled up sentences, to get students to look at the context of the sentence. Obviously, uh, you've got to fill in the blanks, so you'll need to do the listening for part A, page 94. If you listen to the IQ online first, fill in the blanks, and then make that into a, a sort of jumbled up sentence quiz. And again, the same with page 90, you've got to go on to IQ online, listen to the dialogue first, choose the correct answers, and then make that into a jumbled sentence quiz. So now I'm going to ask you to look at these questions about advertising. This question says, uh, um, what uh, is your single key message in one sentence. So these these questions are really for those who want to make an advertisement and I think this is uh, maybe a project that you can do with your group or in your house by yourself. Think about something you want to advertise. Uh, look in your room, is there something in there you want to sell? Think about something you could sell, a product or a service and usually uh, advertisements come from Oleg oligopolies and um, from competitive monopolies I guess anyway so let's look at question one again what is your single key message in one sentence so if I was going to sell if I wanted to advertise a smartphone like uh, the Apple or something maybe I would talk about it's a um, it's how beautiful it looks, or its security, or its cameras, how amazing the cameras are. So just think about uh, what is the key message about the phone? Why is it better than Apple, uh, other phones like Samsung, Huawei, LG? Okay, so work on that and think about what is the single key message in one sentence? Question two, what is the key objective or purpose of this campaign? why are you advertising effectively well maybe you want to sell more phones is that what you want to do maybe it's to compete with other companies that are doing better than you what is the reason for you to advertise maybe you really believe in this product and you think the world needs it so think about that how can you uh, advertise this product or what is the motive okay so then if we look at part three question three with the question is what problems are you solving so what problems do people have because of the uh, not having a smartphone and what problems are you solving for them through that maybe they need another way to pay so they have to have some kind of smart smartphone device to help them pay so is it an issue about how to become a cashless society 
what other issues could you be um, addressing through this phone? That What other problems could you be solving? So think about that. Then number four. What does the audience think or feel about you, your product, or your service? <clears throat> is the product something that is appealing to them? Do they like you as a company or as someone, a CEO? And what about the, the, the service that you get from this product? Is there a lot of care for the people who buy the product? Are you helping people enough with this product? What do they think about you as a company? What do they think about your values, your ethics, the way that you work? Question number five. How should this change after seeing your advertising? So are you addressing the negative image that they have about your product? Maybe they don't think positively about your product. Maybe they're not happy with the battery maybe the camera isn't good enough maybe it's too slow what are you trying to do to your reputation through this advertising campaign to get people to buy your product the next question what are the reasons to buy your product so give them the reasons why why should you buy this product why is it better than other products what makes this a good product to buy and then it talks about who are you talking to so think about your target audience who do you think will buy this phone? Who is it? Is it younger people, older people, men, women? Uh, what are their hobbies, their work, their job? What? Are, what? Uh, how are they educated? Did they go to university? What are they making? What kind of money? And then it talks about your tone of voice. How are you going to approach them? Are you going to do it with energy or passion or? What kind of tone are you going to use there? And I'll come back to that later. And what are the main positives about this product? What are the main things about this product that you think will make people happy to buy this product? And uh, what are you asking people to do? <laughs> what is the call of action? You know, what are they going to do? to get this do they go online what are they trying to do okay what are they going to do to buy this online in the shop okay so you can think about that right so um, what I want you to do as a group and this I guess is a continuation of the previous slide is uh, to design something uh, you are an advertisement group who want to design an advertisement so first of all step one choose a medium so and I've given some examples here uh, billboards um, magazines the internet TV radio sports stadiums and newspapers all of these are good ways to advertise um, so one of the things I put there is sports stadiums and I don't know if you've ever ever been to a sports stadium before um, I have and but there's always advertising you can always see it um, on the sports stadium if you watch um, English Premier League um, a lot of people I know do you can always see advertising at uh, on the edge of the um, around the edges of the stadium just in front of the crowd so the advertising is not for the footballers to look at um, maybe people on the other side of the stadium can see the advertising uh, but I think mainly the advertising is for TV viewers to see and buy different products so you might see for example Adidas or car companies like Hyundai or phone companies like um, Apple and uh, but they're always from companies that are quite well known and so you if you notice it, there might be an Adidas 
or Adidas poster which might be in direct competition with Nike or Puma or if it's a car company like Toyota their advertisement is to uh, get customers away from car companies like Hyundai right so the advertisement is used in a competitive way to try to get people to buy their products so another uh, thing I want you to think about is the product that you would like to advertise and I think choosing an oligopoly uh, might be a good idea uh, an oli oligopoly uh, it's when a number of small when a small number of large firms have all or most of the sales in the industry for example in the car industry or cable television or commercial air travel so uh, it might be something you want to pick one of those and so for example if you're going to do the airline industry you might want to choose a company like uh, Asiana or Korean Air so the other thing you can the next part is to prepare something so make a poster if you didn't choose TV or radio sketch a poster or make a dialogue for uh, any radio or TV advert so work on posters or dialogues and and now I want you to design that and I want you to talk about it with your team and get ready to tell me why you chose it and why you designed it that way so um, perhaps you need to talk to your team on Kakao Talk and discuss it and decide why you thought this would be a good product, why you wanted to advertise in that way. So now I want us to go back to the grammar uh, that we talked about. Um, so we need to go to page 90 and these questions, I want you to talk to other people in the group and write down the answers that you receive from them so in the class I mean perhaps you could talk to individuals on the Kakao t t uh, open chat or, f or even just talk to people you know friends or family do this as a kind of uh, I don't know project for uh, outside of class so you can see the first questions there is do I have to buy a book for this course? So I'm using here have to. So that's a strong obligation. If you look at page 90, strong obligation uses have to. Uh, do I have to buy a book for this course? Well, um, for the EAS class, yes, there is a book. And hopefully you've bought it already. Q Skills for Success, Listening and Speaking. So that is the book that you have to buy. The next question, do you have to follow the school rules? Okay, well, yeah, there's rules in the school. I mean, lately the rules are very strict about the coronavirus, and I hope we're all following those rules. Um, do I have to wear a uniform to this university? No, you don't. You don't have to. So that's an, there's no obligation. So you can see on page 90, the last part in the brown box talks about no obligation. You don't have to wear a uniform to the university, which is good. So let's go to the next question. Do we have to smoke outside the building? Yes, we do have to. We must. I think you can't smoke in the building. It's a prohibited. You can't do that. Do I have to respect other students? you must respect other students you must I think that would be a strong obligation you must yeah do I have to drive slowly around the university I think so you must not drive quickly you must drive slowly yeah do you have to study for a test this week I don't know do you have any tests I don't know so maybe there's no obligation no I don't have to study or you might say well you should study this week so there might be a recommendation to study do I have to turn off the lights at the end of class I think you should that would be a recommendation right 
Uh, do we have to apologize for being late? Well, there's no obligation. You don't have to, but it's recommended. You should apologize because it makes the professor feel respected. And then the last one, do you have to learn how to use software program for your major? I don't know about you. Maybe you don't have to. Maybe you have to. Maybe you must. Maybe you should. No, I don't know. You have to decide on that one. Okay, well, good. Here's a, a bit more practice with the modal verbs. And if you go to page 90 again, uh, or stay on page 90, you can see the modal verbs there in the brown box must not, can't, have to, must, should, shouldn't, ought to, don't have to. So if we look at the first question it says they blank tell lies. What could it be? Mustn't, can't, have to, should, shouldn't. I think it's obviously a negative and it wouldn't be you don't have to, they, they don't have to tell lies. I think it should be either must not tell lies they can't, uh, they must not tell lies or they shouldn't tell lies. Okay? So, number one, I something swim. I never learned to. Uh, I think in this case, I can't swim. But it doesn't mean prohibition in this case. Okay? In this case, it's a different meaning. Okay, number, the next one, you, hmm, wash the dishes because. Mum said so. You, mm, I think, is a strong obligation. You have to. You must wash the dishes. You should wash the dishes is a, is a recommendation. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Mm, he, blank, do his homework before Monday. He must or has to do his homework. Strong obligation. He has to do his homework before Monday. So the next question says, he blank, tell the truth to his boss. So, I mean, usually we should tell the truth to our bosses. We mustn't lie. So I would have thought, very strong obligation. We, he has to tell the truth to his boss. He must tell the truth. Possibly he should or he ought to tell the truth to his boss. Either strong obligation or recommendation. Let's go to the next one. You mm, or you blank to try this. It is the most delicious pizza I have ever eaten. I think it's a positive so it shouldn't be prohibition or no obligation. And it's not necessarily a strong obligation because you don't have to eat pizza but I think it's a recommendation. You should try, you, sh you sh it says to. So you ought to, you ought to try this. It is the most delicious pizza I have ever eaten. You ought to try this. And the last one, you really something, something do this because I can get a student to do it for you instead. So that would be a negative one and I think it's uh, no obligation you really don't have to do this because I can get a student to do it for you instead so that is probably the correct answer no obligation okay just have a look at these here they are incorrect what I want you to do is to correct these modal sentences. The first one here, I mustn't not do that. Well, that's totally incorrect. It should be, I must not do that. That's the correct answer. They can't be swim in this river. Well, the B shouldn't be there. I, they can't swim in this river. So look through those. If you want, pause the video and try to answer these questions and then we're finished so thanks for listening and i'll sort i'll talk to you in class bye